Now, Oli Glasner was not a household name in the Premier League when he was appointed Crystal Manager back in January, but the Europa League winning manager of Frankfurt came in as a free agent with the one objective of shaking Crystal Palace out of their sleep and really unlocking the exciting high-level talent that they'd built their ranks with and show the fans some attacking football that they can really get behind. And, you know, I think I was maybe one of the only people that seen that run of form coming where they became the absolute wildcard team in the Premier League where no one was going to be writing Crystal Palace off after a few weeks. They could score goals they could beat absolutely anyone and coming into this transfer window with Michael Olise, Eberici Eze and Mark Gai being high value assets that were going to be attracting a lot of attention there was always going to be a lot of focus on Crystal Palace in this transfer window on my channel you know can they hold on to their stars do they replace them and how do they furnish how do they upgrade the rest of the squad but this transfer window took a few twists and turns for Crystal Palace and in the video today we're going to have a look at the entire squad and think are Crystal Palace stronger now than what they were coming into the window and the fans now have got really high expectations by Crystal Palace's standards after seeing that swashbuckling gung-ho approach last year and now they're thinking about breaking into the top 10 can they chap the door on European football we'll be looking at that in the video today as well as whatever else falls out my mouth at any point in the video if you do laugh you learn you like something or whatever please do like and subscribe to the channel we just hit 10,000 subscribers and we really couldn't have done that without your support guys so thank you very much and get into the comment section in this one and let me know Palace will they finish in the top 10 will they meet those expectations could they even surpass them or are they going to fall a bit short have they lost a little bit too much quality in this window be really exciting to catch the comments from you guys on that one and uh yeah let's just get stuck straight into it now i've got to say with michael alise leaving for Bayern munich rather early in the window for quite a significant transfer fee i thought that would have been it signed sealed and delivered there would have been no more outgoing transfers and it really would have been about taking that money and reinvesting and upgrading in the squad as a whole but all the way through this window ebri Chiesi had some whispers and some rumors come and go to a few different premier league clubs and right at the end mark guy he was so close to making the move to newcastle but having listened to the chairman's interview on sky sports before recording he said it was only a matter of they couldn't replace them they could have sold them and moved them on made all that money and then they'd have been stuck with nothing because the window would have slammed shut and they would have been much weaker as a result because they had already sold Joachim Anderson to Fulham which was a transfer that really caught me off guard and really made no sense to me on a lot of different levels and when I look at the Palace defence here holding on to Mark Guy he is the big silver line and sure Lacroix is a good signing and I think he could very quickly become a very good Premier League defender for Crystal Palace particularly in this back three system and Chadi Riyad is a kind of prospect signing from La Liga and again we've seen him play he seems rather capable and again he could maybe fill into this back three Free at some point but Joachim Anderson had such a great range of passing such a kind of continental defender as he was Lacroix is not that guy Chadi Riyad is not that guy Trevor Shalaba joining in on loan isn't that guy either so I do think there's great defensive qualities between these three very good recovery defenders very smart players in that back three system but i do feel that the defense has lost something in top tier quality and then when we come to look at the engine room the heartbeat of the team in midfield adam wharton has firmly established himself as being the first name on the team sheet in this position and despite you know getting that england call up obviously never actually featured there was maybe a bit of a suspicion maybe there could have been some big suitors coming for him in this window but after three premier league matches so far at point of recording hughes has been the most regularly called upon partner for him in midfield you know ball playing good decision making midfielders and then the likes of Lerm Lerma and Dukuri do offer a bit of variety and a different sort of play style in here and between these three they seem to be sharing the role of accompanying Wharton depending on the variety of different opponents that Crystal Palace are going to come up against so I think they've got good tactical depth and options here but the numbers are really low so if there was a significant injury particularly to Wharton a little bit of that guile a little bit of that cutting edge kind of goes and then you're asking the likes of Lerma and Ducouré to really show their best self you know and I think when you've got a midfield dynamic like this when you can rotate you know a few different guys in depending on the opponent you're kind of you're, you're kind of stacking the decks in your favour that you're going to get them you know fit and firing and like eager to go and really show a great performance so they can get the shirt and get the position in the team so I do rather like you know the quality that's here and like I do quite like how lean it is to be quite honest with you but just when I think about Premier League football in general it does feel a little bit too lean and it's kind of like playing with fire I feel quite similarly about fullback Mitchell and Munoz for me are going to be frightening this year but with Klein Ward if you want to factor him into that maybe Shalba gets factored into the fullback depth and Schlupp it's a real chalk and cheese first choice and second choice thing so I do think that this midfield four band that we've got here of Mitchell Wharton 
take your pick for who the third one is. And Munoz, like, will cause a lot of defences, a lot of problems, will cause a lot of midfields, a lot of problems, but it's wafer thin. And last year, we've seen a lot of clubs really, you know, that backfire on them for that. When it comes to the attacking departments, hanging on to Eze, I think, was absolutely huge because Eze is fantastic at bringing the ball from back to front. And, uh, you know, this is a funny one because in previous Palace videos, I said, I, if I was a Palace fan, I would say it would be easier in air quotes, to replace someone like Michael Olise versus an Eberici Eze. I just don't see many guys around world football that have what Eberici Eze offers. And again, that interview with the Palace chairman on Sky, he kind of echoed something similar. He was surprised at the lack of interest in Eze because physically, technically, like he ticks so many boxes and his actual play style is just un unstoppable at times, to be quite frank. So I think it was great for him to stay on. But I do think that lack of Olise actually... Maybe Saad is the attempted replacement, but Saad is much more of a, a an attacking, speedy guy, getting behind the lines, cutbacks. He's got a bit of a worldy in him. He's got a bit of crea creation in him, don't get me wrong. But he's not the same as Olise. Like, Olise is proper artillery. Dead ball situations from open play. Can play balls in for strikers coming in, win headers, balls at the back post, all sorts of stuff. And this front three... The whole team is really missing that bit of artillery. Kamada is the ghost in the shell. You know, he's the guy that likes to sneak in at the back post, get the tap-ins. He's good at pressing. He's good at link-up play, but he's not artillery. He's not a guy that's going to be swinging balls in from all angles and open play and muscling by people in the wide areas, cutting inside, doing all that kind of thing. Frank is injured and we've still not really seen too much of him. And I do think Nketia is a, a good foil here, a good kind of backup option, as it were, to Mateta. Mateta's going to retain number one striker position, I think, uh, at the moment. But I wouldn't be surprised if Nketiah did outperform him as time goes on because Mateta last year very much overperformed and I was really surprised. I think Mateta was surprised. I think everyone was at the form that he did show last year. So long may it continue, don't get me wrong, but I don't think Ollie Glasner when he brings, brings in Eddie Nketiah for the thick end of 30 million quid, I don't think he's going to hedge his bets on Mateta keeping this R9 form that he showed at the back end of last year. But no more Andre Ayew, no more Odson Edwards. So again, it's quite thin in these numbers up here. And again, for one season when it is just Premier League football only, maybe you can just about get by with a squad depth. But I do think the squad depth in the important areas, which for me is the engine room and in the attacking department, has got slimmer. There's been no change to the guys that we've got here at all. So the quality hasn't changed in the engine room as such. But in the attacking department, losing Olise, Eze and Ayu, and Olise is the biggest part of that, of course. And bringing in Sar and Nketia and Kamada. I don't know, it feels like a bit of... It feels like something's been lost in it, doesn't it? So, for Palace, for me, like I think the defence is weaker. I think the attack could be just as good, but I don't think it's better. And then, as I say, the midfield section is really no change in it at all. So, I feel myself really torn between a rock and a hard place here because I can't look at this and say the Palace have come out this transfer window stronger. I think they're coming out of it weaker. They've made money. The January window, I would like to see them really try and fill out this squad a little bit better. And, you know, like, I know you can't get an Olise replacement, but try and find someone that has that kind of stardust in their boots, has that kind of wow factor that could come into this attacking department and try to be the next Michael Olise. Because I just think that there's a lot of endeavour here. There's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of technically very good footballers. Eze, you've got a lot of raw power in and you've got, like, those wingers are just flyers. They're just absolute flying machines. Love getting into the back post. They'll be allowed to do that as well, of course. But yeah, there's just not that bit of guile, creativity, class that's kind of missing with Olise here. And I say, even the lack of the attempt to replace it. Maybe Sarah is. Uh, I kind of thought it at the time, but seeing how little he's featured so far, I don't really know what to make of that. I think is what could hold them back is in some of these tighter matches, which is probably a really obvious and stupid thing to say. But I actually think Palace still could achieve their goals. I think they could break into the top 10 this year. I think they could make it quite tough for other teams to qualify for Europe, but I don't think Palace will have enough to really crack into the European spots unless they go on an absolute tear of a run and really, you know, bring the house down with being free scoring, attacking and taking down all manner of opponents. Get those points that no one expects them to get. Once they start doing that, I might change my opinion, but or depending on how January goes, for example. But looking at it now, like I think they've done well to lose a big star. Lose two big stars, I'd put Anderson into that because I think he was vitally important to the squad in terms of the build-up play. Everything else I said about him, I doesn't need repeating. I think they've done well to keep themselves kind of par, kind of level, but I just do feel it is weaker on quality, although, like, general, the floor of this squad has probably went up. 
The head count is leaned out a little bit, so it's more meaningful players in every position. So yeah, I'm really torn between a rock and a hard place. I'm going to have a lot of fun watching Palace this year, and I'll be rooting for them all the way, and I really do hope they put egg on my face and prove me wrong in that regard. But uh, yeah, it should be another exciting year for Palace, and I think the January window might see like the complete transfer plan maybe come into action, because some of this business, like Guy, might have been sold right at the end. 75 million comes into your coffers. Palace then would have been 100 million to the good, and then who knows what they would have went and done at that point, you know? So whether Guy leaves in January or stays or whatever but I think the January window might be Palace could get some really good reinforcements in there so if they can get some really good results between now and January they don't have midweek football they don't have European football to worry about outside of well, midweeks for the Cups and whatever but I think this first half of the season will be pivotal for them because this time last year when they went into the first portion of the season they were managed by Roy Hodgson and it was just an absolute snooze fest so any improvement on last season's first half of the season, for me, is going to be a W. And then if you can get into January and then somehow reignite that Glasner train that went off at the back end of last year, then like really a lot of things are possible then at that point but there's a lot of if buts and maybes and to say yeah I'll have my fingers crossed for you Palace fans and I'm hopeful to get down to Selhurst Park at some point this year on screen and now with some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy I hope you enjoyed this one guys get into the comment section and let me know Palace are they stronger or not are they going to break into the top 10 I'm looking forward to catching the comments on this one stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next video take care